Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this video I'm going to be explaining the argc and argv that are sometimes passed in as parameters to a C or C++ main function. So you may have written C or C++ code before and wondered to yourself, what is argc and what is argv? Why are they there? Well, in a nutshell, argc represents the number of things that you entered into the command line when running this program on a terminal. argv is an array that holds the string values of the things that were entered on the command line when running this program. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry, I'm going to explain each of these step by step. So first, let's take a look at argc. So since this is a C file, I'm just going to print the contents of argc by calling the printf function. And then I'll say argc is equal to some integer. So this percent %d right here in the side of the printf function represents that we're going to be supplying this string with an integer value. And then we specify what integer we want to supply it after this end quote here by saying comma, and then the name of the variable that holds the integer value that we'd like to place right here. So in our case, we want to see what's inside of argc. We'll end that with a semicolon, and then we'll go ahead and give it formatting by putting a new line here. We'll save this, and now notice here I'm in a directory which I've named args, and if I type the ls command, we can see that inside of the directory I've got args.c, and args.c is this file that I have open here. So we're going to compile args.c by saying gcc, and then the name of the C file we want to compile, which is args.c. And then we're going to give it a minus O flag, which allows us to give our executable file a unique name. And I want to give our executable the name add. So I'm going to press enter now. And now if I type ls, we can see we now have our new executable named add inside of our directory. So let's go ahead and run this new executable and see what happens. So dot forward slash add. And here we get the output argc is equal to one. And that's because we entered one thing when running this program. We entered the prompt itself. That is the one thing that we entered to run the program. So I could enter more things. So I'll do dot forward slash add and I'll say Paul programming. So here I'm entering one thing. Here's a second thing I'm entering and here's a third thing. So when I push enter, we should see the value three inside of argc. And sure enough, we get the value three right here. So if I wanted to modify this a bit and just take off the programming here, we should get the value two. The prompt to run the program would be the first arg and Paul would be the second arg. So we've got two args right here. So argc just represents the number of things that we entered into the command prompt when running our executable. So now let's take a look at this argv here. So argv is an array and in the C programming language, a char star is a string. So you can think of RV as an array of strings. And the strings that RV holds are essentially going to be the things that were entered onto the command prompt here. So let's go ahead and write some code so we can see what that looks like. So I'll just go ahead and do another printf function here. So here I'll just say, let's see what is in argv. Then I'll put a new line here and that with a semicolon. And I'll wanna go ahead and just run a for loop here. So I'll just do four. And actually before I do that, I'm gonna go up here and create an integer variable called i and I'll use that as my index for the for loop. In the C programming language, you can't say int i as the beginning of your for loop. You can do this in C++, but in C you've gotta get rid of this declaration right here. You can't declare a variable inside a for loop when you're writing C code. That will work in C++, but not in C. So we're gonna start at the index i, and as long as i is less than the value that's stored in argc, then we're just going to do the stuff in the for loop, and then we're going to increment or add one to the value of i. So inside of the for loop, what we're going to do is we just wanna see what's inside of our argv array. So I'll say argv, and then I want to print out a particular index, and so I want to see what index I'm printing, so I'm going to put a integer placeholder here, and each index of the array is going to hold a string value. So I'll put percent %s to let the printf function know that we're going to be placing a string value here. And so we'll just go ahead and put a new line here. Now let's go ahead and specify where we're getting this integer and where we're getting the string value. So the integer value is coming from i, it's just going to represent the index that we're currently looking at. And the string value is going to be the thing that's inside the ith 
element of our argv array. So I'll just say argv, and we're gonna look at the ith element of that. So now I'll go ahead and save this. I'll go ahead and type the clear command here. Now we're going to recompile our program. So I'll say gcc args.c minus o, add, and now we'll go ahead and run our executable one more time. And here we've got one thing, it's the prompt to run the executable. And we can see that we've got the value of argc is one. And then in argv index zero, we have the thing that we entered here to run the program. So that's pretty cool. Let's look at this again with some more arguments. So let's say add four, six, eight. So now we can see that argc is four. We've got one, two, three, four things that we entered onto the command line when running our add program. And now we're gonna see what's inside of the argv array. Well, argv index zero holds the prompt to run the executable. Argv one holds the four, argv two holds the six, and argv three holds the eight. So you can see that each of these just got placed into the indexes of the argv array. Now, just to kind of help demonstrate what we can do with this stuff, let's go ahead and have our program add the values that are stored in argv index one and greater. So to do that, we don't really want to look at what's in index zero anymore. We're going to start with index one because those are going to be the numbers we're going to want to add up here. And so we can go ahead and continue to print out what is inside of our argv indexes. But let's create another integer variable here. We'll call it sum and we'll initially set it to zero. And what we're going to do is every time we enter this for loop, we're just going to say sum is equal to itself plus whatever is contained in the ith index of argv. But the ith index of argv is actually a string and sum is an integer. So we're going to convert this string to an integer by just passing it into the a to i function. So now we're going to get the integer value corresponding to the string that's stored in the ith element of argv. We're going to add that to the value of sum and then store that result inside of the variable sum. We can actually do this in a simpler way by saying sum plus equals a to i of the ith argv. And so this right here using the plus equals is the exact same thing as what I wrote above. We'll go ahead and delete this part right here since they both mean the same thing. So now our code is a little bit more simplified. We're just adding the next integer value to our sum total. So let's go ahead and just do a really quick check here. We don't really want to do this calculation if we're only dealing with the zero with arg here. So we'll just go ahead and just do a quick if check right here. We'll say if arg c is greater than one, then we wanna go ahead and do the logic that I put here. Otherwise, we'll just go ahead and skip this whole section. So we'll go ahead and shift this over for formatting. So as long as we have an index one or greater, we're going to go ahead and add the values of all the things that I enter here on the command line. And then we'll go ahead and print a total of that when we're done. So let's go ahead and write the print function to print the total. We'll just say total equals, and it's going to be an integer value. We'll put a new line and let's go ahead and tell it where we want that integer value to come from. And we want it to come from the sum variable. I don't have anything really checking to see if I'm entering integer values here. I could enter a string or a floating point or something like that. But if you were concerned about making sure that these were actually integers here, you'd wanna put some more checks into your code to make sure that's the case. But I'm not going to worry about it for this program. Let's go ahead and expand this window a little bit since we're kind of cutting off the code right here and we'll modify this window size also. So let's just go ahead and save this file now and see what happens. So we'll say clear, and now we'll just compile it one more time, gcc args.c minus o add. Now if I do dot forward slash add and push enter, it says let's see what's in argv, but then it goes and it checks and it sees, okay, argc is not greater than one, so it skips this whole section, so that's working fine. So now let's go ahead and run our program and we'll give it some integer values to total up for us. So we'll say three and two and five, so that should give us a value of 10. So we'll push enter. You can see the value of argc is four. There's four things here. Let's see what's in argv. This time we're not printing index zero because we changed this to one. So we start with that index, start with index one here, and we print index one, two, and three. You can see three, two, and five are stored in those indexes. And if you add three plus two plus five, you get the total of 10. So we can try it with the one other thing right here. So let's just change this to a negative two. So three plus a negative two would be a positive one plus the five would give us 
us a positive six, push enter, and we can see everything looks fine. Arg C is four, Arg V1 holds three, Arg2 holds the negative two that we changed here, and Arg V3 holds the value five, and the total is six when you add all three of these together. So anyway, that's an introduction of what argc and argv mean when you're using a C or C++ program. Thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.